Why, hello, and thank you for choosing the Vegan Luna podcast. If you came here to listen to influencers, business owners, people that are really making a change in this world and really creating some amazing ideas and amazing inventions, then you came to the right show. This show showcases some of the top people in the world that are making an impact, whether it's the environment, whether it's for health, or whether it's for the animals. This podcast is also available on YouTube, Apple Podcast, Spotify, Anchor, Google Podcast, Stitcher, and anywhere else you can find podcasts. I'd like to thank my sponsors, Perium, for providing some of the best organic superfoods that you could find on the market, as well as Vegan Nation, who is the first ever company to create a cruelty-free currency. Hello and welcome to the Vegan Luna podcast. We're here with a super special individual who is actually um, living in Kuwait. So back where I used to live, uh, now I'm currently in San Diego at the time that we're recording this podcast. And so this um, individual, her name is Yasmin, and she is an online activist um, in Kuwait. And I really uh, love some of the work that she's doing. She made, she posts beautiful, amazing food. She has incredible recipes and she inspires so many people um, at such a young age. And I can't wait for you guys to get to know her a little bit more to see what it's like in Kuwait, what it's like being a little bit more active in Kuwait um, and, and how impactful people could be uh, or how impactful one person could be. So. Uh, before we get into all the introductions, uh, we are going to do the, our five quick vegan questions. All right. So question number one, what do you think it will take to get to a vegan world? Would it be a law? Like, okay, the law says, you know, this is illegal. Yeah, the law, the law, definitely. Right. Yeah. So what else? What do you think else might need to happen? Like there's just things that need to happen, right? But uh, wait, if you're talking about the law, some people do illegal stuff, so they might still yeah. kill illegally. Yeah, so, you're right. There's, you know, there'd probably be like if that were to happen, like if it was illegal, there would be like a black market, right? For some, yeah. But at the same time, it would still be the majority. You know what I mean? Like not like every single person would do that, right? In Middle East, the Eastern countries, it's like it's a tradition to, for example, eat meat. In yeah. Eid al Adha. So, yeah, like, so, that would be hard to. So, then escape. it would take tradition changes, right? New traditions, adopting new oh, new traditions and stuff like that, right? Um, it's a religious tradition, so you can't really put new traditions or take off old traditions. It's like a picky topic. Yeah, right. It's interesting the families that end up doing it, right? Like, the ones that are able to instill like the new tradition or whatever like maybe they're like hey we're we're gonna have a vegan holiday or a vegan celebration stuff it's like that, right? possible yeah it's possible but in traditional families it's not likely <laughs> yeah i always find it interesting this question like i usually ask this question because it's interesting to see like sometimes where people's mindsets are at, you know, like some people have the mindset of like, yeah, it's possible. I think we can do it. You know, if we just do, we take this step and this step and this step, like it can happen, you know, and they're more like optimistic. And then there's like some people that are like, you know, it's going to be, you know, like, no, I mean, I have some people that say no way that'll never, it'll never happen. And that's cool too. You know what I mean? But I think it's all about yeah. like the perspective, you know, it's like the old saying, like, if you believe it, like you can achieve it. You know, so like if you believe in something, like it's more likely to happen because you kind of set that goal, like that you believe it's possible, right? Yeah. Uh, all right. So, question number two: um, Do you find it challenging um, to be vegan in Kuwait? So, what? How do you find it? I don't find it challenging. Um, I never found it challenging, really, because we have vegan options, vegan restaurants, and even if we didn't. Um, it's easy to make like vegan food, vegan delicious food at home, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So no, it's not challenging. Yeah, I agree. When, when I first went uh, vegan, I was, before I went to Kuwait, I was only vegan for one month. Uh, so I was still new, right? So when yeah. I went there, pretty much all my learning and most of my the cooking and eating and everything was, was in Kuwait. So for me, it was like not very hard at all. Like there's plenty of options everywhere you went. Like it wasn't 
you know, all the supermarkets had like what you, yeah. need. you know, even like the supermarket that was next to me, it had like almost all of the milks were plant based, you know, so it was just really easy. Um, yeah. And so I don't, I don't, I don't think it was too challenging. I agree. All right. So uh, number three, what is your favorite social platform uh, for educating people about veganism? Instagram's like, you know, I don't think Instagram, nor Twitter, nor Snapchat. I mean, Snapchat has been more popular, like a lot of people have been watching, but they could easily skip and like not see the message. So I think YouTube. Oh, YouTube, yeah. You, yeah. Okay. Why do you think YouTube? Because it's a full video that someone chooses to watch. And if they watched it fully, they would get all of the, all of the information. Yeah. Whereas in other social media, like if you type it, it's kind of hard to, you know, every, <laughs> thinking about it now, every social pl- platform is like, good for spreading the message but it's about the followers like if you have if you have not that many followers in your platform form no matter what it is it's hard to send a message yeah for so sure. any platform it's good yeah yeah all right cool so um what is your favorite superfood to cook with maybe like a spirulina it's, or something like that i think chia seeds she is. It's a superfood, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one has that one's loaded with with lots of good stuff for sure. Yeah, that's yeah. a that's a good one. The chia seeds. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um. So, what is your favorite dish? A tofu stir fry mm-hmm. uh, with some rice. That's that's also good. And you know, it's not time consuming. When I I usually cook uh, tofu stir fries when I come back from school. Or when I wake up from a nap when I come back from school. It's really fast and doesn't take that much time and tastes pretty good. <laughs> nice. That's great. Yeah. All right, cool. So you did a great job for the quick vegan questions. Excellent. So now tell us a little bit about yourself. Who are we talking to? Um, you're talking to Yasmin and she's from Kuwait. <laughs> she's 16 year- years old and she... I'm pretty outgoing and I know how to talk to people, you know. If if you put a stranger in front of me, I would know how to talk to them. And I'm really passionate about school. I'm most likely having mental breakdowns two times a week because of school, but I still love school. <laughs> um, oh, gosh. I... <laughs> more power to you. If you love it, more power to you. I'm like, thank God school's over. Now it's time to <laughs> focus on the on life. <laughs> yeah. I used to, I'm pretty athletic, but um, the, this year and this past few months, I haven't been working out as much. But I still play volleyball in school and we have a tournament. We have a tournament coming up uh, this semester. So... That's interesting, I guess. <laughs> yeah, volleyball's and, fun. Yeah, I have... I, sh- I suck at it because I'm short. Oh my God. I'm <laughs> short too. I'm 155 centimeters. But like, I guess it's about the way you shoot the ball and not the height, you know? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, if you say so. We're playing, we're playing mediocre volleyball. Like, not, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> yeah, nothing it's not fancy. professional. I'm thinking like yeah. professional. If you want to know more, um, I have two brothers and two sisters that I die for. I have supportive parents. And my sisters are... Not, not my sister. My sister is vegan. And my other sister was vegan. But, you know, my, my brother and my other sister were vegan, but they turned unvegan for some reason. I think it was social pressure or something. Or they... I honestly don't know. But one of my sisters is still vegan with me till this day. So that's that. Yeah, for sure. So tell me why, like, I mean, <laughs> you, you were very young when you made this decision to go vegan. And in a country like Kuwait, it's very not socially acceptable um, at all. Most people, when I went there, they didn't even know what the word is. They don't know what that <laughs> yeah. means. 
Um, of course, it's part of the culture and tradition. And I, and I always find it interesting with, with culture and tradition. And I always say culture and tradition doesn't justify violence, right? Yeah. So for example, in the US and, and people will say, oh, in my culture or my tradition, and that's fine. That's okay. Cause everyone, the reality is everyone eats meat in every culture and every tradition. And also if you're going to say like, who's more or who's less for the U S the U S eats more meat per, per person, like more kilograms yeah. per person out of the whole world, but Kuwait's number two, you know what I mean? So I and get Kuwait it. is like, a small country. Yeah. But no, per person though. That's what I mean. Like kilograms oh. per person, right. For, for a whole year. Yeah. So, so the the reason why that's important is that it's very similar you know what i mean so i always believe that like if someone can do it you know in in a country that's challenging then then anybody can do it you know um but for for growing up there it is it is a little bit harder um to make those decisions especially younger like like i mean when i was young we nobody was really talking about that uh, but now it seems to be a little bit more popular. So for you, yeah. that's the reason why you went vegan. You know, I was a stubborn kid since I was like young. So if I want to do something, I'll do it no matter what. And I wanted, I was um, 11 when I started focusing more on, you know, cooking and eating and health and exercise. So I watched a lot of YouTube videos like a lot and um you know some are, some of them were plant based so I never really focused if they're plant based or not. I just wanted to see what people would eat in a day, you know. So one day, you know, I was seeing people like go vegan, eat vegan, but I never thought that I wanted to do that. And the uh there was a vegan YouTuber that I was sub- subscribed to at the time, and she posted a video about um, reasons to become vegan. So I watched it out of curiosity. <clears throat> she said, um, "Like your nails grow faster, your hair grows faster, you know, all of these health benefits that come with being vegan." But she also recommended watching Earthlings. So I was like, "Okay, let's give it a try." I watched Earthlings and. You know, I was shocked. I mean, I knew that animals were being killed, but I never, you know, made the connection. So when I watched Earthlings, I I knew that from the start, I knew that I didn't want to contribute or support that. So I became vegan after watching Earthlings. And I never turned back. <laughs> Why do you think that... Um they don't show footage like that on the TV, like on Earthlings. Because if they showed these type of footages, people wouldn't buy and that would ruin the people's income that are, you know, the farmer's income. (laughs) Well, because, you know, it's about getting money. So you would ruin basically their business of killing animals if you showed people the truth. Because in every business, there's a hidden truth, I think. Not in all of the businesses, but there's a nasty truth in some businesses that no one wants to know and that people are hiding. So that's one of these businesses. Do you think that like for businesses like that, like that it should be exposed and that the truth should be shown and then it's up to the person to decide I want to choose this company versus this company and if they're both showing the truth. Yeah, I think they should show the truth, but what company would take footages like like genuine footages of their cattle and show it's being showing how it's being treated like genuinely. Like because if you're yeah, exactly. on camera you're going to do you're going to do things more perfectly more gently you know handling the animals more gently making it seem like they're living a good life but behind cameras you never know what happens and this is where the activists take videos and expose them so the person should do his own research behind the companies before like you know yeah for sure so like maybe maybe they don't know the truth 
and yeah. the companies aren't going to show the truth. So they, they look and they find the truth. Mm-hmm. And then even with, even with companies, like that happens all the time. I always find it interesting, that argument, you know, that, that, f- that we can't change this because the farmers will lose their job. The reality is jobs have been changing for a long time, you know, um, and, yeah. and even farmers, farmers in some area might have to have, might have a harder time because c- of the climate. But there's other farmers that'll, that'll be just fine transitioning the plants if they want to keep farming, you know. But yeah. like even just yeah. old technologies, like even like, let's say the light bulb, when the light bulb first came out, well, now candles, like the candle makers don't have any job. They have to figure it out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like even, even more recently, like let's say Netflix, Netflix coming out. Well, the company that was selling movies before that went out of business because of Netflix. Yeah. You know, and that might've been more jobs than, right. that might've been more jobs than farmers. Maybe, you know what I mean? Cause it was a big company, but Things like that happen over time, you know, and I think that it, it it isn't always the, the, the number one reason, you know, to not make a change because like someone might, might go out of business because that, that's, that's just part of it. That's, that's the tough part about business is that somebody could take your place at any time. Do people actually use that excuse that the farmers will go out of business? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as far as like Like, an excuse. like Like actually. Not like a real excuse of like, oh, I would go vegan except for the farmers, but as like they bring it up as like a talking point as far as like, oh, but what about, you know, the farmers? You know what I mean? No, they just bring, you know, I think when people ask that question, they don't actually care about the farmers because like, <laughs> why would you care about another person's business? You know, they, they're they just oh, yeah. asking it because they want to, yeah. they want to get in your, get in your skin. Your Sometimes, nerves. yeah. <laughs> But sometimes it's, yeah. it's a logical thought. Like sometimes they think like that that's sometimes I call them like roadblocks. You know what I mean? So yeah. like, like, let's say, you know, you have a road and, and at the end of the road is like someone may, deciding to go vegan. Right. Well, once you hit a roadblock, you have to figure out how to get across that one or how to move out of the way. Right. Um, and, and some are easier than others and some aren't. But what I always tell people is it's not like, if you have someone that's very close minded and isn't going to change their mind and isn't going to listen, your best, your best job. Okay. You have two, you have your best decision in that situation is just to leave them the person alone. Right. Yeah. So don't, don't focus on the person. Don't worry. That's fine. But, but you're going to come across people that are open-minded and that are willing to learn or ask questions. True. And then you spend your time on those people and that's fine because let's say you yeah. have 10 people and, and out of those 10 people, you need to find out, well, out of these 10 people, two are willing to change. So let me just focus on those two. So your job is identifying ones that are willing to change and identifying ones that aren't. The only reason yeah. that I, for me personally, the only reason I would go a little bit longer on a conversation with someone, like let's say online, is not for that person. It's to educate the people that are reading those comments. So if somebody yeah. comes along and reads those comments, they're going to see someone that's really like illogical that hasn't doesn't have very good reasons and then someone that's very logical that has really good reasons and then the person reading the comments will make the decision who won the argument so my my job Mm -hmm. on comment isn't to win the argument my job is to just spread information and it's up to the the person reading the comments to decide to accept who's right or who's wrong you know but if i become very irrational or if i become very rude or nasty then you lose right away Mm -hmm. You know, so that's the tough part. Um, but that's, that's my advice for like people that are talking to people like about these topics. Cause it's, it's kind of like a skill that you learn, like, just like anything, like, let's say you want to learn how to do video editing. That's a skill. You had to learn how to edit videos before, before editing videos, you didn't know how, right. But now you know how, right. Mm -hmm. Um, or when you learn how to drive a car, like that's a skill. You have to learn how to drive a car, talking to people and persuading them to make a, a a good decision is also a skill and yeah. and it's it's not a, i mean it could be used for bad reasons you could persuade someone to do something really bad right mm-hmm. you could persuade someone to hurt somebody else you know but you yeah. also could persuade someone to do something really good you know like not harm somebody else right so the idea is is how do you how do you learn that skill and and it takes time like like this I is, think some some people are unnatural at it, you know. 
some are natural they, yeah oh 100 percent. oh yeah some people know how to connect and and they know how to do it um really really well and and really really influence people really well yeah some are very natural yeah. with it. and some aren't but it is a skill like e- even if you're natural or not you could still get better at it and you could still yeah. improve upon it and that's that's mm-hmm. like what i'll do if i'm going to do in the street activism where i'm talking to people on the street um they're all strangers you know what i mean and you're just asking them questions and and educating them and that's all yeah. like like real time like quick and you ha- and you have your your goal is not to make them go vegan your goal is just to educate them just to inform them on things that they probably haven't learned um before and then it's up yeah. to them to make a decision so so you have no emotion in it so my emotion isn't I'm not mad if they don't make a decision and I'm not super happy. I mean, I'm happy if they make a decision, but I don't expect it. I expect nothing um, when I'm conversating with someone. I have zero expectations. So that way, if they don't care or they, or they are mad or they yell at me, which is rare in those situations, but let's say they're really mean and rude, it doesn't matter because I had no expectations. You know, so, yeah. um, so that's just the easy way to keep your mind fresh because otherwise you'll get overwhelmed. Um, which happens yeah. to some people, um, for sure. But speaking of that, um, what are some of the things that maybe you do? Um, how do you get active for animals? Like, where do you spread your message? Um, online or in person? How do you do it? Um, before, it used to be in person, on in person, <laughs> and online. And now it's more online, you know, if someone asks me about being vegan, I like vaguely answer because I don't have the time or energy, you know, to answer. Um, but I see a lot of people like interested, like when I'm in my family gatherings, um, I ask, a few, I ask my, not a lot, like some of my family members like say that they want to try being vegan, you know, to lose weight or something. But, you know, it's never really serious it's just like vaguely telling telling me that they want to go vegan but not actually like you know like something they do wish they could do or like you know me being vegan always like usually comes up but not as much as before though but because you know it's been a long time you know everyone's used to me being vegan but uh if i'm at a like bigger bigger family gathering you know in Kuwait. We do a lot of weekly family gatherings. Sometimes it's between close family. Sometimes it's like the bigger, you know, roots. Um, when I like refuse to eat like, you know, because it's winter, we're, we're barbecuing a lot more. You know, uh, they always bring up like, oh, why are you vegan? Why don't you have a burger or something like that? Or, you know, you're missing out and I'm like laughing it away, <laughs> you know. Yeah, for so sure. So me being vegan always comes up, but uh, from before I used to get into arguments, you know, with uh, my family members or my siblings or my friends about veganism and like to take a lot of my energy. And now I just don't put my energy into that, you know. Cause yeah, it's just about kind of hard. It. Yeah, it's about spending the energy in the right place at, at the right yeah. time. You know, and it's, yeah, if, it's I a found, tough if I found if I found the right person, I would be more than welcome to help them. But if someone is just like you know, just talking vaguely about it and are not really interested, I wouldn't put my energy into it. You know, I'm careful on what I'm putting my energy into. Yeah, you have to be smart about it. So, what kind of things are you doing on Instagram? Because that's where I first saw you on Instagram. So, I want you to share. What do you do? What's so special about your Instagram? Um, I feel like my Instagram isn't that special, you know, I just post my, post my pictures of my recipes and I write the translation of English and Arabic for how to do the recipe. And sometimes, you know, I'm active on my story, you know, get to interact with the followers, you know, ask them questions, ask them about their day or ask them about topics, you know, that kind of stuff. And why do you think it's so popular? Why do you think people like your the way you do your pictures and the way you do your recipes? To be honest, I don't think it's that popular, you know, compared to other accounts. But um, 
I that's think one challenge that- though. You always got to think it's, it's so easy. If you, if you play the game, right? So you're young, right? So you're still learning, but if you play the game, I promise you, if you play the game of, you know, somebody else has more, right? You will it's always will lose. Exhaust me. You'll yeah. always lose because you'll, you'll yeah. never win ever, ever, ever. Right. You could get, once you get to 1 million followers, doesn't matter. Somebody has 2 million. Once you get to, you know, uh, 50 million followers, it doesn't yeah. matter. Someone has a hundred million. So you'll, you'll never, yeah, yeah. like, you'll always lose that game. It's even, even the stuff game. Some people are like, Oh, mm-hmm. if I get this house, you know, then I'll, I'll feel like I made it. Then they get yeah. the house and then they're like, Oh, it's a trick. Yeah. But this house isn't as good as that one, you know. So you oh, it, it's just a losing game, right? So the the game yeah. is always like, it's not about it's. You always lose the game when you compare yourself to others. But the game yeah. that you could, the game that you could win on a daily basis is the game where you compare yourself to who you were yesterday, mm-hmm. right? Or who that you were last true. week, or who you were a year ago, right? So if you compare yourself to that person. That's also going to, one, that'll be, that's an obtainable goal. And two, that's also, that's also going to put you in a, in a much happier place, right? Because, you, and, true. and you'll also shut out a lot of this, the kind of like stuff that doesn't matter. You know, like sometimes there's a lot of things that you'll read about, you'll see, like sometimes my, my, I don't know, maybe my sister will come up and tell me this interesting story about something that she thinks is interesting. And I'll look at her and think like, why am I going to spend my time on that? Where in the past, yeah. I might have been like, oh, whoa, cool. Let me tell, whoa, what happened? And I might get interested in that. But now I'm like, you know, I don't have time for that. Like, I can see that that's, that's uh, not important anymore when maybe it was. Yeah. And that's just, a, that's just like a, a small shift in, in the mindset. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But anyways, yeah. So for me personally, like you're like, especially when I was starting Instagram, I was brand new and I saw yours and I was like, to me, that was a lot. Like I was at like, like 200 followers, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so for me, it was a lot. And it was also great because you could see easy recipes to help people. And it was also cool because I think that that's what some people need in Kuwait. The biggest question I got was like, what am I going to cook? What am I going to eat? You know, where's some mm-hmm. recipes? And I think. Yeah, that, these are the biggest questions. Yeah. Cause I don't, that's something that I is, that's not my expertise. Like I'm not the recipe person. Right. So mm-hmm. to go to someone that can help people with recipes, that's a certain skill that not everyone has. You might see you might see it as easy or simple, but someone from the outside that doesn't cook very much, that doesn't, you know, um, know how to make those combinations or those flavors to them. It's it's like art. You know, you're looking at yeah. someone that it's like if you go talk to a, a someone that's a great artist, they're a great painter. And you say, oh, my God, that's amazing. It's so beautiful. How do you do that? And they're like, I didn't even try. Like, I just was like doing this. And you'd be like, what the heck? Mm-hmm. It's so amazing, though. You know, yeah. that's, that's the same thing that people are looking at for you. You know? Um, oh. And so you might not think that, but it's true. And so uh, something that's great um, that I liked also is that you made all the pictures like the same. What made you decide to do that? Mm, I don't know. I saw other people doing a certain theme. So I wanted to do my own theme, you know? Yeah. You know, keep it... Because if my account looks like more aesthetically pleasing, it would, um, you know, it would look better for like, let's say a new follower comes and checks my account. If my pictures are all messy and, you know, they don't match, (laughs) they wouldn't, they wouldn't like... Most likely they wouldn't follow if aesthetic is what they're for, you know? That's funny, yeah. And mine's like the opposite. Mine's like all over the place. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, here's I've a picture, noticed. here's a video, here's a this. I'm just like, mm-hmm. post, post, post. Yeah. Yeah, so um, is there anything else that maybe you really want to share with people um, that we didn't talk about? Or is there anything else that maybe you want to repeat? that you think is really important that you don't want anyone to forget? I think people should do the research and decide whether they're vegan or not. And there's one point that I think people don't think about is that you don't need to be 100% vegan to make a difference, you know? It's all about um, supply demand. And if you supply for less meats and less cheese, less, you know, less animal products, 
if you like put the effort to supply less uh, i mean demand demand less uh, animal products that will still do a difference you know um so if someone let's say is vegan vegan like okay he's ve- he or she are vegan but every like three months they they want to eat cheese you know or yogurt i think that's fine if it's for one meal or like once every while like they have they have a little animal product because if you're thinking about it in the logical way it's supply demand you know if if you live in a non vegan household and you see something that you're really craving so you hold back from that and then you end up i you end up like binging on all of the animal products but if you like you know why is it hard to explain okay so imagine you're a vegan and you've been vegan for a while and you wanted like a chocolate for example it has milk in it but you wanted that chocolate and it's been laying there for like a couple of weeks no one's going to eat it and you want that you shouldn't feel guilty for it you know it won't it won't really affect if you had that chocolate you know because you're vegan most of your life you know yeah i think it i think everyone has to has a has a different mindset around the idea yeah, yeah. you know and i think that um that that on the grand scheme of things like you're absolutely right for like for like how it's impacting like maybe environment or health or, or whatever right for sure but if you if you take it on the opposite side and you say for the the animals right for for the for the individuals right each individual matters you know what i mean so like you're yeah. right like let's say the chocolate is, that's there like that chocolate for sure it's done like it's already been made it's, it's like nothing's going to change you're absolutely right right um yeah but i think it's like it might be the ones that like okay like they choose to do it you know it's like that that impulse yeah they choose the they impulse, choose to go and buy that yeah like the impulse is a little bit different but i think it's like the choice you know where it's like you know i'm choosing i'm allowing myself to have this once a month like let's say they have a cheat for once a month right for most mm-hmm. people like especially in the in that in this in this area um or this um belief is that you know that there are no cheat days you know what i mean and i've i've heard mm-hmm. it put this way like there's 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 two people that think veganism is hard right there's or there's there's two pe- there's two types of people the, the ones that think veganism is hard and the ones that think veganism is is easy the ones that are mm-hmm. that think veganism is hard are only thinking about themselves they're only saying oh yeah. i will miss cheese or i will miss bacon or i will miss burgers or i will miss they're only thinking me 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 i i right mm. the ones that think it is is easy are thinking about them about the victims about the animals so yeah there's those are the two mindsets and so each one has a different mindset and some is a little bit higher and a little bit lower like there's even people that are so passionate about the animals but they're vegetarian because they don't know right they don't even know mm. about um that there's cruelty in eggs or cheese right um they might not know that right so there are different different wavelengths and levels and and i'm with you on this fact that if somebody is doing something they're making a changes they should be um appreciated for that change but also they should be accountable for how do they go further right the question yeah. is how do we get you to the next step like for example if someone's like oh i finally cut out cheese i'm not going to say that's not good enough I'm first I'm going to say that's awesome. Oh my gosh, that's great. I know it was how hard it was to get to get rid of cheese. It was really hard for me. I would relate to them. I would I would mm-hmm. I would give them praise and I would say, you know, good job. I would also relate it to me because and feel it relatable because I know what it's like. I used to eat cheese too. Then the next thing I would say is, okay, so um you know, what's holding you back on eggs? You know, like w- like how can we get past eggs next? you know, like great job on cheese, but now let's eliminate the eggs. You know, have you tried, Mm -hmm. you know, tofu scramble? Have you tried this vegan egg? Have you tried? And then you like, you push the, you push, you push them a little bit, not in a bad way, ask questions and they're going to feel much more 
comfortable because you gave them praise. So you acknowledge they did, they did a good thing. People mm-hmm. were very finicky creatures. We're like kind of like sensitive, you know, we need, to, yeah. we need appreciation. We need to say good, feel like we did a good job. We need to feel yeah, like yeah. We did the right thing. Right. So, okay. You give them that. Right. And then you can ask for a little bit more. And that's the thing is, is ask for a little bit more, not ask for the moon. Now, okay. Now you need to go hundred percent vegan. It's okay. Now, how do you ask for a little bit more? Right? How do you hold them accountable? So holding accountable mm-hmm. is not a bad thing. That's, that's a good thing. You can hold people accountable in a nice way. Right. Yeah. Um, like if someone was going to go <laughs> harm a small child, you can hold them accountable. You know what I mean? Like if you know, they're going to do that, like you're just doing the right thing. You know? Yeah. Like, um, just depending on how you do that. Right. Um, mm-hmm. but anyways, um, yeah, that's kind of like, um, what I would say to those things, because those are, those are good points. Yeah, you're lucky so. you're still young. You know what I mean? And you're, you already realized some of these things. It took me until I was 29 to start making any kind of change. Yeah. It's, you know, so it's different for everyone. So, like, I was already fully, like, it was already a way of life, even more so. I had been doing it for even longer, right? Um, so I was, it was mm-hmm. more ingrained in my brain. I was more accustomed to it. I had been doing it for you know m- many, many more years. And so, mm, yeah. when I made the decision, it was just to try it. Right? I said, I'm going to try it. I'm going to not eat any animal products and see how I feel. And then I felt great. And once I saw the cruelty, I said. I won't go back. And then that was it. Yeah. And then I felt like, I felt like, okay. And I, if I'm going to, if I'm going to be consistent, right. I have to, I have to, um, I have to be strong. You know what I mean? Because now, Mm -hmm. now for me personally, I feel like I have a following. So I have to be, I've seen, I've seen what happens when, when someone that has a big following maybe makes a mistake or eat some whatever yeah, animal product. And it's like, mm-hmm. I feel bad for them. You know what I mean? But at the same mm-hmm. time, like in my head, it's avoidable. You know, it's like the person that goes and they drink and drive and you feel bad for the person that was drinking and driving. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah, but you chose to drink kind of, you know what I mean? It's like, mm-hmm. I feel bad for you. But at the same time, like, why did you choose that? Like you could have, you gotta make yeah. time, you gotta choose differently like because they're all choices you know accidents mm-hmm. are different though like like if i'm eating some bread i'm like oh shoot that had eggs in it like i didn't know yeah accidents like, are different i think that's different like i had accidents like i'm sure i probably eaten some beans or something that had like animal fat or something by accident like yeah. accidents are fine it's hard. i think it's the intention yeah. and it's about yeah, purchasing if they, if they know if they know that it's not vegan and they choose to spend their money on it to yeah. pay that to pay the person, the company yeah. that chooses to do that stuff. That's what makes a difference. Also, you're still young and you're not even buying your own food. Like once you start yeah. buying your own food, it's different. So when yeah. you could buy your own food, when you buy your own stuff and you're, and you're like, especially if you're living in your own, like you're not going to, you just won't, you'll never be tempted with something that's not in your house. Like if you yeah, don't have that, it in your house, exactly. you're not like, you're never going to, you're probably not going to go walk to the Bacala <laughs> or the supermarket <laughs> and get yeah. some chocolate right yeah you know, that's probably not gonna happen but and even if i did i would go and i would buy the vegan chocolate and that's the non-vegan one you know yeah exactly so it's don't feel guilty like you, there's certain things that are out of your control and everyone's human you know so mm-hmm. as as long as you're you're doing your best to go forward and, and make decisions and improve like every time mistakes happen all the time when i make a mistake i say how can i improve upon that mistake like what did it, what happened? Why did it happen? And can I learn from something from it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. People need to use that mindset more. I mean, yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> that Definitely. Would be a little bit different. <laughs> yeah. 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 People are very quick to blame others and not take responsibility for their actions. Yeah, that's that's very true. They always say, like, you know, whenever you're, if you're pointing your finger at somebody they say that there's always three fingers pointing right back at you. Mm-hmm. And that's because of these ones. These ones are pointing back at you. <laughs> so that's why it's yeah. three. <laughs> All right. So um, where can people find you? Where can people follow you if they want to follow you, uh, follow your journey? Um, my Instagram, uh, cruelty-free.coit, and uh, my YouTube, uh, Yasmin Haidup. 
Okay, and awesome. Yeah, is it cruelty.free.kw or Kuwait? All spelled uh, KW. KW, okay, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you so okay. much. Um, I appreciate your time. Um, no problem. Thanks for I'll helping let, me. Yeah, um, I think that everyone, hopefully everyone learned a few new things. Um, and hopefully. Be, um, even better for the future. All right, so have in a Kuwait, great day. Uh, wait, in Kuwait we say inshallah. Inshallah, yeah, inshallah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't right. know if you heard it before, but yeah. Oh yeah, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Okay. bye. Bye. Thank you guys for listening to the podcast. Please, please, please make sure that you guys share this with anyone that you think will find this interesting. And also make sure that you guys subscribe because I can see a lot of you guys are listening, but you aren't subscribed. So please subscribe. And also don't forget to go to my website where you can leave comments and see more content at veganluna.com.